Those who came in, my name's Jose Northo. Uh, raise your hand if you like money. Okay, everybody's in the right room, good. Uh, raise your hand if you love money. Okay, some people raised their hand and some didn't. Um, we're going to talk about money in a different way than you've ever heard it before. We're going to talk about the basic stuff, but we're really going to talk about how you feel about money and what you expect to have happen with money and how you can develop your maturity to handle money, right? By maturity, I mean just old enough to know what to do and what not to do, right? If you have a two-year-old baby, would you give them a $100 bill and say, go play? What do you think? What, what can happen? Right, somebody can take it from them, they may lose it, they may flush it in the toilet. The thing is, you, don't know, you know a two-year-old doesn't have the capacity to see what the value of money is and to do something with it. So what we're trying to accomplish is to get you to act, not just your age, but older. Because we're going to think a little bit about what's coming up down the road. Right, when I get up in the morning, I say, okay, what do I have to do? I usually do it the night before. Okay, I'm going to go teach a, a class. Uh, later on, I want to go have some lunch. I'm going to meet my business partner to talk about a few things. Sometime in the evening, I may see a little toy I want to buy one of my children. And, oh, what if I stop at my mother's house? I always have to give my mother a little bit of money, just say, Mommy, I love you. Here you are. So I have to make sure I have enough money to do that. I don't have to have the cash, but I may have one of the other instruments that you use for that. Anybody tell me what some of the other cash or money instruments are? Yes. A debit card. So a debit card is... Same as money. Now, a debit card will go into how it works and what's the difference. Somebody tell me another form of money. A check, you know, somebody writes on a piece of paper given by the bank, and that lets you go somewhere and say, this is proving that I have money in this bank, so please use it to pay for what I'm taking. You were going to say? A credit card, right. It looks the same as a debit card, only because it's plastic, but it works very differently. The credit card focuses on your reputation, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. Just remember that. Put that in the back of your head. Your credit is your reputation. Okay? Uh, anybody else? Was another form of money or something that's... Yes? A money order, right? You go to a place, you give them cash, and they are certified by the State Department of Banking, and they give you a piece of paper that looks like a check, a little different color, maybe it's one company or another, and you can send that to somebody or give it to somebody, and they know that that's the same as money. Now, what if I just took a piece of paper, and I went up here, and I cut a piece of paper, like a rectangle, and I wrote down a million dollars, and I gave it to you. What could you do with it? Not much. <laughs> that's right. You know my finances. What were you going to say, sir? He said a very good word. You really can't do anything with it. I might be a millionaire, but the paper and my signature is not going to be accepted by anybody else as certified. So for me to take your check, the reason I take your check, not because you signed it or you put a certain amount on it, because it says the name of the bank. And the bank gave me an account number. So it's not really that I trust you. I trust the bank. So if the bank gave you this piece of paper. I trust that they know what they're doing, and therefore I'll take the piece of paper and I'll give you whatever it is the check was for. If you'll notice, what we're going to keep talking about throughout this class, it has to do with trust. How do you think you might establish trust? How do you think you might get someone to say, I trust you enough to give you two quarters or ten dollars or whatever? Give me an example. She makes a good point. Friendship. But I know you. You're my friend. Maybe we live in the same building. Maybe we went to the same school for many years. I really, really know you, and I feel comfortable. So I'll say, yeah, here's money or $100 or whatever. Now, she said $100. Can I be your friend? Because that's a lot of money. <laughs> okay? But what my point that I'm trying to make is that a big part of your financial life is going to be based on people trusting you. Uh, this generation, you all, I'm sure, have phones, right? So think about it. You go to eBay, and you want to buy something, and you click a button, and you enter a number, you enter an expiration date, and they trust you, and they process a transaction. If the bank says, no, 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 she ain't got that kind of money, eBay says, do you have another card that we can use? I used eBay as an example, but it could be with any shopper, right? When I go to the supermarket, if I have cash, what do they do when I give them a big bill? Have you seen what they do lately? What do they do when you get a $20 or $50 bill? What do they do? 
They hold it up. Does anybody know what they're looking for, by the way? Yes, sir. To see if it's fake. Does anybody know how you can tell if it's fake? Yeah, they have a, the, they have a little strip that is put in by the treasury when they make the bills that's very hard to duplicate. That way people won't just get a copy machine and say, well, I'm going to get paid this weekend, you know, and copy and copy and copy. So the bill has to be, again, verified so they can be sure that they trust you. You look like a nice person. They maybe even see you in church or your house of worship. But they got to be sure before they give you the meat and the groceries that you got money. If the bill looks funny or doesn't pass the test, they say, I can't take this bill. You can't take these groceries. So I've been talking a little bit about like. And one of the things that I want to start with this is to start to really talk about our emotions around money, right? We become friends. We play softball together. Maybe we go to the park and play handball. Maybe you and I like the same movie. And we get to know each other. Maybe we're neighbors. So we're friends, right? Now you say, I'll give you two quarters for parking, but I'm not giving you $100 because I don't know you like that. And sometimes we think we know our relationship with money, but maybe we don't. Sometimes you have a relationship with money that is not healthy. Imagine, for the ladies in the room, imagine you got a friend that you like, you like romantically, you know. Maybe the guy's cute, or you like him in school, or whatever reason you like him. And guys, imagine the same thing. You found somebody that you like, every time you see her, you're like, oh boy, you know, you just feel kind of good inside. Imagine if that person, every time you said hi, hey, how you doing today? Hey, did you see that show last night? You ever want to go out maybe and get a, go get a burger? At some point, you would stop loving them. Maybe, yes, I hope. You don't want to follow somebody around for 40 years and say, I haven't talked to you in 40 years, leave me alone. But my point is, you want to find a way to express yourself. So money itself, this does not love me. What was that? I heard somebody, no, speak. Whoever wants to speak, speak. Please. Okay, so he's, br he's, bringing up the, he's bringing up the point of the legality, just to clarify it for you. The legality speaks about destroying money. So if I destroy money, I didn't destroy money, all I did was tear it. A piece of scotch tape, it'll be good, and I'll go buy my potato chips and my Big Mac. Anybody feel anything when I actually rip the money? Lay it on me. What'd you feel? <laughs> yeah. So anybody else? I saw a few more hands go up. Sir, in the back with the glasses. I saw you smiling. Tell me what you felt. I felt like a part of me just left my body. A part of you <laughs> just left your body. That's deep. Anybody else? Please. Go ahead. You can all speak freely. Go ahead. What were you feeling? I saw your face really emote. Oh, so. Okay, okay, and that remind me, so remember these three letters, I'm going to call on you in a moment to help me with this, O-P-M, 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 all right, so what were you going to say, miss? I know you had a thought, because your eyes lit up like something happened. Okay, if you don't feel like sharing it now, that's okay, but the point is, everybody in the room felt algo, something gave you a little itch. Sometimes I jump between Spanish and English, so bear with me. Did you hear the bill scream? <laughs> they say, oh, Jose, what you doing to me, man? It doesn't care. Money does not love you back. The dollars don't care. Your friend feels something. Hey, thank you. This is a beautiful gift. I could see you put time and effort and consideration into getting me that. But the money itself, once it goes to the cashier, the cashier gives me the dress. The money goes maybe to pay the light bill for the store and the light company invested in somebody's payroll, the money doesn't care, it just goes wherever. It just goes wherever you put it, for whatever you put it. What was the letters I asked you to remember? OPM, OPM. anybody know what OPM stands for? Take a guess. We're talking about money, so what's the money stand for? What's the M stand for? Money. OPM, 
Okay, OPM stands for, listen closely, other people's money. Other people's money. When I ripped it, some of you went, huh. This gentleman's words were, I felt like a part of me was gone. That's what's interesting about other people's money. It came out of my pocket. You didn't know I had it before I took it out of my pocket. And when I put it back together, it won't be in your life unless I decide to buy you something. But you felt an emotion around other people's money. That's why I say we have, by the way, good answer, because you understood. You said, I don't feel anything because it's not my money anyway. So you want to start getting used to, even at this age, not focusing on other people's money. I notice now, because we have TV and internet, I'm a little older than I had a time when this was not part of my life. Everybody knows how much money Jay-Z made. Everybody knows how much Beyonce mo she made for the last concert. Everybody knows how this baseball player who hit 30 home runs, how much money he made, and that person made that much money. And that's interesting. But I don't have Beyonce's number, and she ain't trying to Google me either. So what Beyonce made is nice information, but how does it put food in my refrigerator? How does it put food for my children? How does it prepare me for retirement when I don't do this anymore? How does it prepare the people I care about that I want to help? I can't go to the supermarket and say, you know, Beyonce made a lot of money. Could you please give them ground meat and bread and rice and some juice? They're going to say, we don't care about that. That's not currency. That has no value to us. So when you're thinking about money, think about the value. Don't raise your hands, but in your mind, we all know who the A students are, right? In every class, there's one person who's like, I got the sharpened pencil, I did my homework early, I did the extra credit assignment, and I'm ready for every little assignment you give me. And I turn in my homework neatly, stapled in a folder to make sure that it's not wet so that the teacher can see that I did my homework. And then we all know somebody who's like, well, you know, I, I, I did it, but you know, my mother, she did the thing and the laundry, and I did it, I swear, I did it. But, you know, and my cat ate it, you know? And that's how come I ain't got my homework. When the day comes in the future, and the student with the story about the cat and my mama says, I didn't do my homework, do you think the teacher says, oh, that's OK. I know you're always reliable? No. Say, no, you, you always have a problem with your homework. That thing is new. But if the student who has the, the nice thing and everything prepared and always gets A's and always turns in the homework and the extra do thing assignment says, I left my homework at home, do you think the teacher might believe him? Yeah. yeah, because their history speaks about what you can kind of expect for the future. So you see, this works in every area of your life, not just money. You keep your word, people trust you. You break your word, people doubt you. You break your word often enough and people don't want to hear about you. You're at a great stage, you know why? Right now, you have no history. So if you walk into the bank, the bank just says, what's your name? Where do you go to school? Who are your parents? Where do you live? And you say, I'm trying to get money to sign up for a special school because I want to be good at whatever you want to be good at. And the bank says, okay, we're going to check with your parents and we're going to let you borrow because you're a good young person and we want you to succeed in life. I'll tell you a little secret. They don't just want you to succeed in life. They want you to always borrow money from them. It's a business. Don't get it twisted. But they are the place to go for the money. So you have to work within that system. We're going to touch on that also in a moment. So they say, well, how much does the course cost? You say, it's a $300 course, but there's some materials. So $500 would be really good for me to use for this course. So the bank says, no problem. $500. Everybody see this? And the bank says, come tomorrow. We got the check. We're going to give you a debit card. So and here's an account number so that every two weeks or every month, you give us our money back. They don't want to go looking for you either. So they lend you $500. We're not going to worry about the interest right now. They say, give us back $50 every month, let's say. First month, you pay $50. Second month, you pay 50 
Third month, you pay 50. Fourth month, you pay 50. You paid on time. You paid in full. What do you think the bank is thinking about you? Give you more money. You're reliable. You're trustworthy. You're honest. You're responsible. Once you make the fifth payment, I can guarantee 100%. The bank's going to send you a letter. Dear valued customer, because of your excellent payment history, we want to see how we can help you fulfill other needs. Maybe you need a car because you're going away to college. Maybe you need money for the dorm because you're going to be living off campus because you've been paying them consistently. Let's flip it around. You borrowed the 500. You took your course. The first month comes up. The payment is due on the 25th of the month. On the 27th, oh, man, I forgot to do this. But you know what? I'll send it next week because he's having a party, and i got to have some paper in my pocket to go to the party. So the bank's going to have to wait. You got it like that. They're not going to come knock down my door, right? Bank don't come to your door, boom, give me the $50. No, they let you roll. But they make a note, late. The next month, late. You paid it, but you paid it late. Third month, you paid late again. You had to buy the new Nikes. The fourth month, oh, I met this girl. She's I got to take out. She's all that. So I got to have bank. I have to wait. This shorty's fine. So now you're late again. Now you're going to get a letter from the bank. It might start the same. Dear valued customer, we've noticed that you've been having difficulties keeping up with your payments. Please contact our customer service department at 1-800-blah-blah-blah-blah-blah-blah. We'd love to hear from you. When you call that 800 number, do you think it's going to be a nice voice? At first, it'll be, hi, good afternoon. Thank you for calling blah, 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 bank. Yes, and your name, please? And your account number? Now, here's what happens. That same voice from, hi, nice to hear from you, goes, oh, yes, one moment, please. <laughs> that means they're going to get somebody going to bark at you. <laughs> it's going to tell you what's up. Good afternoon, so-and-so, so-and-so, blah, 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 bank. Yes, your name? Uh-huh. And your account number? Oh, great. Um, how can we help you? Well, that's code for when you're going to give me my money. Now you've got to get on the phone and explain to them what's going on. You say, yeah, 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 I'm going to be on time from now on. Don't worry about it. I got it covered. Uh, that just had a little setback. Okay. Next month, you're late again. The month after that, you're late again. Now what they say is, we're going to send you a stronger letter. Dear valued customer, same words, but you can bet there's nobody singing behind it. Uh, we need you to contact our credit department immediately at this number, and it's always a different number. Now when you call this number, good afternoon, credit department. All that lovely sound is gone. They, got, they know they got to talk to you. This is, the, this, is, this is the gangsters in the bank. You know, credit department, yes, uh, my name is so-and-so. Uh-huh, yes. Well, we need to know when are we going to be able to be current with the payments because we've noticed you've had a delinquency of six consecutive months, and we want to see how we can help you pay us our money. They don't say that part, how we can help you. And you say, well, you know, I, I got behind on that first thing after I took the class, and I had a little situation, so you understand. And, you know, yo, you should have seen the shorty. She was all that. So I couldn't pay that bill that month. And the Nikes, they look wonderful, man. Yo, everybody's talking about them on the block. The bank says, very good, sir. So how can we help you? complete your financial obligation. And you say to them, what will really help out is make it easier on both of us. Why don't y'all just give me a thousand and then I'll really get straight and I'll be able to give you all your money back. What do you think the bank's gonna say? What do you think? The bank's gonna say, absolutely, come get your check? No, the bank is gonna say, absolutely not, is what you said. Now, what could the bank do to get their money back? Like I said, they can't come to your house. That's not allowed anymore, yes. Well, the interest, they're going to be charging anyway. The interest rate might get higher, correct? What else could they do? They lower your limit. 
So next time, they're even giving you more money, they're going to give you less money. Yes. Ah, say it again. They would lower your credit score. You see, the banks and anybody who lends you money, they have a thing called a credit score and a credit reporting network. And guess what they do? They gossip to each other. They say, listen, what's your name again, your first name? Scrioni didn't pay us the money. So bank A tells bank B, by the way, you see Scrioni? I gave you the heads up. By the way, you're a bank. If you happen to see Scrioni, he's a fraud. He gonna pay his bills. So now you say, well, the bank over here ain't giving me love. I'm gonna go to that bank. And when you get there, good afternoon, the same thing. Good afternoon, how are you, sir? Good to meet you. How can we help you? I'm interested in a loan. Well, come on into the office. And they sit down, and you get there, and you get the nice thing. Would you like a coffee or a tea? And they treat you real sweet because they don't know the info yet. All of a sudden, yeah, can I have your ID, please? You wanted a loan? Can you give me just one moment? And they leave the room, and they come back, and they print out your payment history from the other bank. They say, well, uh, we certainly want to help you, and, we've, and we would love to have you as a customer. Uh, however, we noticed that you took a loan from our bank down the block, and it shows here, you've six months where you haven't paid on time. So we're kind of concerned because if we give you money, what's to assure us that this won't happen to us? So that's your credit worthiness. The same example I used with this young lady about the $100. If you go rush and you pay the bill back, then the door is open down the road for more money. But if you take your time or you're late or you ignore it, the word gets out. Don't lend him money because he don't like to pay on time or he don't like to pay at all. So who do you want them to talk about you? Or what do you want them to say about you? Do you rather hear he's reliable, she's trustworthy, she's dependable, she's prompt, or would you rather hear, don't lend them money, me lo hizo a mi. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, it's, he did it to me. God bless you. He did it to me. So you don't want to be in a position where people are speaking bad about you to other people simply because you didn't take care of a bill. The, the sneakers were cool. The date you went on was wonderful. The pizza you ate was delicious. And after the pizza's gone, you threw the sneakers out, the girl don't call you back no more, the bank is still sending you a little letter. Here's a good rule of thumb. I'm sure you're all old enough to have your own mail key or go get the mail for the family or wherever you live. When you get an envelope and the envelope has plastic on it, there's either somebody trying to get money from you or you owe them money. So you want to live a life that when you open your mailbox, it should be nobody calling you about money. When you pick up the phone, because I see a lot of people I know, they owe money everywhere. They pick up the phone, don't delete. Nope, unavailable. Send direct to message because they're thinking it. Somebody called me with an 800 number. That must be the bank or that must be the furniture store or that must be the sneaker store or that must be the TV store or that must be that loan I took when I went on a little trip. So now you're trying to hide from people you can't hide from. You say, well, you know what? I've been messing up in New York. I think I need to move. I'm going to Florida where my aunt lives. I'm going to go to school down there and nobody knows me down there and I won't have all these people calling me because they don't know her address. And when you get to the bank in Florida and you walk in, hi, sir, how can we help you? Yeah, I'm going to talk about a loan. I'm in school. I want to do some things. Oh, wonderful. Come right in, sir. Would you like a coffee or a tea? Good to meet you. My name is so-and-so. What's your name? Oh, okay. Well, that's terrific. So what are you trying to do? Well, I need about $500 because blah, 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 blah. One moment, sir. I'll be right with you. And what do they do? What do you think they do? They go back out, just like they did at the bank in New York, and they get some other person, and the person comes back with the paper and says, well, you know, we certainly would value you as a customer. However, you left New York and you owe money. They don't say it that way, but that's basically the message. So my point is, wherever you go, say this with me, wherever I go, there I am. So you can lie and steal on 104th Street. When you get to 106th Street, somebody got a cousin live on 104th Street, and they say, by the way, watch out for that one. She likes to say, let me get $10 real quick, and then you don't see her for a month. 
Watch out for him. Last time I saw him, he said, I'll be right back. He left my $20. I don't know where he's been. I, he's been ducking me. What you are, who you are, what you do will follow you wherever you go. Pay your bills. Pay your bills. I'll say it 95 times. Pay your bills. I don't care if it's 25 cents. Yo, let me get a ca and candy real quick. I'll see you tomorrow, the grocery store guy. You know, hey, okay, take, go ahead, kid, I know you. The next day, bam, here's your quarter. Don't make him look at you funny two and three times. You come in, you get a soda. You come in and get a bag of chips. You come in with your moms and get some stuff. But you don't speak to him about that quarter. You say, it's only a quarter, man. He's got a big store. That's not your concern. That's their money. Handle it the way you're supposed to because you don't want someone to do that to you. Just ignore you and not pay your money either. So don't assume that other people's money, oh, he's got a bodega. Oh, he's got a supermarket. I already got four supermarkets. That's still his quarter. So don't assume anything with other people's money. We got that so far? Any questions? Any concerns? Does anybody in this room owe more money than they have in their pocket right now? Be honest. Okay, anybody else owe more money than they have in their pocket right now? Okay, I won't ask you the circumstances, but I will tell you this. Whoever it is, when was the last time you spoke to them? You haven't addressed it yet. Is the money owed already or is it going to be owed soon? It's already owed, but are they expect, were they expecting some money before today? No, so when are they expecting some money? Okay, so you got a little bit of time. You were saying, or you were about to say? Okay, miscommunication, okay. Be responsible. Yeah, so there's an example, as she was just sharing, for those who didn't hear. Borrow money from somebody, it's kind of like a friend, and you're... I didn't borrow, it's like, you mean like pay for, for my blessings? Right, okay, so, so you took a service, and they were expecting payment, and so far there hasn't been a payment, or enough of a payment, and you know there's a little bit, there might be a little, like a tense feeling, or maybe some doubt. So you're looking at losing your trustworthiness, maybe a friend, and of course, not going to get more lessons, if you haven't paid for the old lessons. Anybody else? I think you just raised your hand as well. Please, tell me. So student, loans. student loans. Okay, so you took money to learn something, and uh, the bills are coming, or the bills haven't come yet? Okay, do you have a plan on what you're going to do when they start to come? Um, I think so. <laughs> okay, I think so with a giggle. If I, if you, let's ask your, let's ask your peers. If I borrow money from you and you ask me, hey, Jose, you going to be able to pay me? I'm like, um, I think so. Would that make you run to the bank to get me the money? No. You'd be like, wait a minute. Let's get a little bit more clarity. And here's one thing about money. You'll, you'll laugh because as you'll go through the years, you'll hear what I'm saying is true. When people's money is straight, they look you in the eye. Yo, I'm going to give you that money Friday. We good? I'll see you Friday. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> Eye contact says a lot. Some people are professional liars. They can just, they'll tell you they're George Washington, and they'll, they'll just they'll look you right in the eye and say, I'm George Washington. But most people, when they look you in the eye, they usually have to tell you something that's true. So be aware of these things. And plus, you're all old enough. You know when somebody's talking blah, blah, blah. You know. Yeah, right. You know, you hear them, they lie about stuff. But when they talk about money, you want to get clarity. And just a little side piece of information is not useful. Do you know that there's a policy at the New York Stock Exchange and the American Stock Exchange? If they issue a certificate, we're going to talk about stocks in a moment also. If they issue a certificate, there's a policy that the, the f if they have an image on the stock, the stock must have two eyes facing forward. That comes from an old tradition of look me in the eye. We're talking business. Let's look each other in the eye. Let's be clear with each other. I can't say, well, I'll kind of pay you for the class <laughs> kind of soon. No, look me in the eye. I'm going to pay you for the class on Tuesday after I get my check. And I'll probably see you. But if I don't hear, if you don't hear from me by 5 o'clock, please text me and make sure you remind me. That's clarity. 
no, 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 no. The money I need to borrow from you for that thing that the coach wanted for the sports team, I'm going to be sure to get you that on Friday afternoon, no later than 2 o'clock. So you can bank on that. That's where you hear that phrase. You can bank on it. Take it to the bank because it's official. But if I say, yeah, well, you know the money. Don't, pfft, girl, don't worry about that. You know you and me tight. Yeah. I don't want to get too tight. Give me my money. Let's, let's stay loose. <laughs> okay? Don't get too tight with my money. So these are things you're all nodding your head about because you already know. This class is about not just knowing something, doing something. Tell me, anybody here, name a healthy food. Any food. Go ahead. Kale. Kale. Anybody else? Name a healthy food. Salad. Avocado. Salad. Salad. Anybody else? Healthy food. Mango. 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 Carrots. Mango. Plum. If I said double chocolate stuffed cupcakes, <laughs> right? You know that's not a healthy food. But we buy them. I'm not saying it's a wrong thing, because you see I just gave out candy. I like chocolate foods. I like so and so forth. But I can't pretend that I'm eating healthy when I go to the store and get a big bag of chips, a big thing of soda, a big thing of chocolate, and a big thing of popcorn. I got to tell myself the truth. It's that way with money. When is your first payday? Friday. See how everybody spoke up? <laughs> everybody knows when the money's coming. Here's a better question. What are you going to do right after you get your pay? Anybody want to be honest and tell me what they're planning on? Yes, sir. You're going to pay your phone? Oh, good, good. I'm sure your family's happy with that. Yes? Go out to eat. Okay. Treat yourself. Yes? Okay. You want to get some sneakers you saw that you like? Yes. You're saving it. Okay. Saving for what, by the way? For school. Okay. Very good. Pay your sister back. Okay. He's handling debt. So, so far we heard treat myself, go out to dinner, uh, pay my bills. Uh, treat myself, et cetera, you, and you had, well, I think I can make a suggestion. Guess what my suggestion would be? I'm not embarrassing you. We're just talking. Okay. Well, put it this way. I live all the way in the Bronx. Where do you live? Here in the neighborhood? You live in Harlem. Let's say it was snowing for 10 days straight. Blizzard snow. Schools closed. Airports closed. Everything's closed. And you owed me $1,000, I'd find you. I'd come through the snow with a dog, mush, and I'd find you and say, ah, I see you. Where's my money? So what you want to do is, and I'm not saying you personally, so just so everybody understands, I'm not embarrassing anyone here. We're all, we're all adults, and we're speaking like adults. Look for that person as if they owed you money. Okay, you know how you say, I don't have time, I haven't been able to, or for my phone was down, or your phone was down, or I don't know, you lived, you lived in Mars for two weeks. Whatever your story is, say, if they owe me money, how hard would I look for them to get my money? So you turn that around, and you say, let me look for them just as hard when I owe them money. Because that gives you, would you say something good about her if you said, wow, there's a snowstorm and she dogged me down and came to my house in the snow, shivering. I gave her some hot cocoa. She goes, I just had to see you and give you your money. What words would you use about her? Dedicated. She's dedicated. What other words would you use about somebody like that? Dependable. Dependable. See how the same words are coming up? Dependable. Dedicated. Reliable. That's who you want to be before your history starts to go down. Oh, yeah, she owed me money. I heard she owed the school money, too. By the way, the lady gave me the classes, da, da, da. And people love to talk about, what's the letters? OPM. OPM. People love to talk about other people's money. I heard that she let Joe borrow $50, and Joe ended up quitting her. He dumped her and said, I ain't seen you no more, so I ain't got to pay you that money. Well, I heard that she went to the store and bought the money and put a down payment and she, they let her leave with the bicycle and now she moved out of the neighborhood and she doesn't pay her bill and the guy from the bicycle store is looking for her because she stole some her. I think in Spanish the word is chismeando. Yeah. I'm talking, 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 talking about OPM. I would rather you not talk about my money, but if you are going to talk about money, I want to put something good in your mouth to say. Oh, yeah, he pays his bill on time. He's very generous. He, he gives money at his church. He's this, he's that. Talk about that. 
But generally, do people go around spreading good news? What do you think? Most of the time, what do you hear people? They're like, she. Did you know that he? La, 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 la. And I heard, la, 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 la. So I tell you that he owes $10. You tell her, and she says $10. And she tells her, but she didn't hear. She said $20. And then before you know it, a little $10 bill became a $20 rumor. But the rumor doesn't start if you pay the $10. As you see the slide in the front, it says your financial responsibilities and capabilities. Somebody read this to me. Go ahead, anybody. Shout it out. Rule number one, money does not love you back. We proved that when we did this, right? Did anybody hear the money scream? No. Did no, the, the building say, Jose, no, you're hurting me. It doesn't care. Money does not care about you in any way, shape, or form. If you want to go buy a new pair of sneakers, and you want to buy some new earrings, and you want to buy a computer for school, if you want to buy a new book that you heard was interesting to read, if you want to buy a cheeseburger, if you want to buy a, pay your beauty parlor to do your hair, the money doesn't care. It does not love you back. So we already touched on that. Let it go. Don't be emotional about it. Just be specific about it. Yes, I need you to pay me the $50. Yes, I need you to pay me my $5. Oh, well, but your parents have money. That does, has nothing to do with it. They have money because people pay them back. Somebody read rule number two, nice and loud. Yes. It's Say it again. You either have the things you want or the reason why you don't. Well, I was going to pay for this class, and I was going to take this thing from the school, but something happened, and the money I had to borrow to my sister, and then, you know, the job, they cut my hours. Those are all reasons. Reasons are fine, but they're just reasons. I can't take a reason to the bodega and tell him I want a sandwich. I can't take a reason to Nike Town and buy a new pair of sneakers. I can't take a reason to City College and say, I want to take classes, but you know, I don't have the money because they're going to say, when you get the money, come back. We will be here. So you either have the things you want or the reasons why you don't. Do reasons matter? Yeah. Somebody had a tragic accident? Yeah. Yes. Say it again. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. She, she goes exactly to the point. When do reasons become excuses? Oh, you wouldn't believe what happened. Man, the big pit bull dog next to our house bit the cat, and the cat had to go to the veterinarian, and the veterinarian said it'll be $500, and guess what? I had $500 on me. You didn't want the cat to die, so I had to pay the veterinarian. But you know, as soon as the cat gets better, I get some more money, I'm gonna see you. I don't care about the cat. I hope your cat gets well. But that's just a reason why you don't have my money. You guys with me? Make sure that the reasons don't become tired, lame excuses where people are going to start to call you those words we said before, irresponsible, unreliable, a fraud. Value yourself so what you want or the reason why you I was going to go to college, but you know, da, 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 but I couldn't go because. That's a reason. I was going to enroll in this program, but I didn't because. That's a reason. I was going to get that nice dress I saw in the, w in the window, but I couldn't because that's a reason. You either have the things you want or the reasons why you don't. Somebody read rule number three, nice and loud. Yes. Say it again. If you always save money, you always have money. How simple is that? When is payday again? Friday. Friday. So, and then when's the payday after that? Friday. No, the next payday where they're going to give you another check. And dos semanas, two weeks later. So they're going to give you how much money, by the way, you're supposed to get paid on Friday. Anybody know the amount? Okay, so here's, my, here's, here's what you got to know. Whatever money you have Friday should last you two weeks. Real simple. What? I can't go to Nike Town with that money. Maybe. What? I can't tell that, that, that. Fine. 
but you got to find a way to take the money you get. How many days in two weeks? No, how many, Ray, how many days in two weeks? 14. 14 days. So if you get $100 on payday, you divide it by 14. I'm not going to do the math, but whatever that comes to, that's what you got to make happen. Because that's what adults who are responsible with money. Now, obviously, you guys are all in school or you're in the summer youth program. You're not going to have all the money you need. But whatever you already deal you made with your parents or your guardian or whoever you live, find a way to divide whatever you get. I hope it's 100 or 200, whatever amount it is, and divide it by 14 and make it work. Oh, man. That's not enough. Fine. That's what education is for. That's what a skill is for so that when you go to work, they can give you more money. And then it'll last more, or you'll do more over 14 days. But don't pretend two Wednesdays from payday, yo, Ma, can I talk to you? But, yo, I got to ask you something. You ever notice when you want to ask some money, the conversation go real slow? Real slow. You know, that's a nice dress you got on. Wow, wow, you look beautiful. Yeah, let me, well, well, I need money. Don't play yourself. You already know math. You already know what things cost. You know what the dollar menu costs, a dollar. So don't play yourself and try to pretend that you didn't know that you had 14 days to make your check last. So maybe you need sneakers. They might be more than your check. OK, now you can have a conversation. Listen, Dad, I want to get the sneakers. I got you know, for the sports team. We're going to be doing this and that. Uh, I got $50. Can you help me out and get the rest? Your mom, you know, so and so's having that party. You know, they all dress real fly, and I like to go there and look right, represent the right way. But all I got is twenty dollars. Can you help me out with the blouse? I'll get the pants, or you help me out with this, or you pay for my hair. You pay for my hair, and I'll pay for this. Work it out. But fourteen days is how long your check should last. Oh man, I forgot to get my metro card, so I need money to get to work. You might not get a check. You need to be responsible for what you're responsible for. Remember the first slide, what it said? It said your financial responsibilities and capabilities. So your responsibility is to have a metro card that gets you to work. Your capability is you can count and add and subtract so you know how much money you need for that. It's not a secret what the metro card costs. They put it up on the glass. So when I get money, how much is a monthly unlimited? Now, obviously, I'm an adult. It's a different thing. But you got to ask yourself, how am I going to get to work and back for 14 days if I need to travel? Who's going to pay for this transportation? Who's going to help me pay for it? Don't be jumping the turnstile. Don't be, don't be in the back of the bus talking about, you know, you guys seen it lately when people got on the bus? I think it's so funny. I see people got on the bus. They got the Bose headset, the, the, the Nikes that cost $225. The jeans that cost like $75, the t-shirt that cost like $60, and the headphones that cost like $350, and they walk on the bus. Yo, babe, please. What? <laughs> put, your, put your card in the metro thing. Hey, how you doing, man? Yo, can I get a ride? I guess your friend. That's a bus driver. So if that's you and it makes you uncomfortable, deal with it. But don't be like looking around. I see people looking around. Where is, it? is there a cop? Is there a cop? And then they want to walk like they're, like they're a paying customer. Oh, my God, this is dirty down here. Yeah, because you ain't paying your money, so we can't have pay nobody to sweep the damn carpet or to sweep the platform. Own what your money's about. I'm not saying this to embarrass anybody or to make anyone feel bad about what they're doing, but you got to own what's going on in your life. If you tell me it's your birthday on Friday and you're my best friend, you would like it if I said, listen, man, happy birthday. Let me go get a slice. Would that be nice with your friend on your birthday? He said, let's go get a slice. And I know it's coming. And you see me spend all my money on your birthday. I'm like, yo, happy birthday, man. You know, I'm a little short today. You won't be mad at me, but you'll think, wow, how come he didn't think of me enough to save 250 Is your friend not worth 250 on their payday? I mean, on their birthday? Own these things. One of the challenges I see often for your age group, and this is not about you personally, don't get it, don't get it uh, offended or get it twisted. One of the things that happens is sometimes you want to be a little girl and sometimes you want to be a woman. Sometimes you want to be a little boy 
cocky. Sometimes you want to be big hombre. Be who you are with your money as an adult. The reason they hired you and they let you do the job and the reason they give you a check is because you show that you have enough maturity and enough responsibility and enough accountability to show up to work and do what they're asking you to do. So now when you get the check, don't always be going, Mommy, I need my new sneakers. Mommy, you promised me you were going to pay my phone bill. Mommy ain't selling all these texts and all these, look at me, another selfie, I'm here. Selfie, 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 selfie. If they charge you a penny per selfie, boy, everybody be broke. You got the phone, you're the one talking on the phone, you're the one telling whatever story's telling on the phone, you're the one having the conversation on the phone. Don't play it off. Well, mommy, I need the phone in case of emergency. No, you like the phone because you want to talk and yak and do this. And I'm not saying your conversations aren't important. Have whatever conversation you want. But when the bill comes, don't all of a sudden go back to little girl, little boy. You were a man talking down the street. Yo, what's up, dog? I'm doing this and that. You know, I'm all this and I'm all that and blah, blah, blah. Well, girl, you know that I did that and I told him and he did that and blah, 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 blah. Now the bill comes. Guy got goo goo. I'm a baby. I can't pay the bill, mommy. Yeah, you can pay the bill. You working. You had the conversations. Own it. I'm not saying don't be young, don't be spirited, don't have fun. Don't get that twisted. But own it. You're an adult. Find the person and tell them something. Even if you got to cry, tell them something. Because I would rather, I'm going to give you my own experience. I'm going to go back in time. I used to owe somebody crazy money years ago. I wouldn't even tell you the amount. I'm going back about almost 40 years. And it got out of, I got out of control. And I kept finding ways to avoid them. We did business together. So I knew when they were not in New York, and I'd go places. When they were in New York, I'd avoid places. Finally, one day, somebody taught me what I'm teaching you. Knock on their door. Hi. Well, about time. I thought you died. No, nah, I just wanted to tell you I'm sorry I haven't taken care of this money situation, but I got a plan. I want to do this. Can we talk? Yeah, come on in, man. But they were still hostile. So what's up, man? Da 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 da. A little talk. Th their wife made a little food. We ended up having a real honest conversation, or I had to admit I messed up. I don't have no super fancy excuse. I didn't get hit by a plane. Uh, I didn't. I didn't go underwater. Uh, the the no. I just I just plain old lost my mind a little bit and just said, you know, I'm not going to pay the bill. And, and it, got, it got bigger than me. Do you know that conversation was, like I said, many, many years ago? That person and I are business partners now. You say your brother owes you $50. Imagine you guys make it right. What's your last name? Ramos. And all of a sudden, in five or seven years, we go down the street and we see a business, Ramos Brothers Incorporated. Because he cleared it up and you forgave him. He deserves your best always. Your future deserves your best always. Do you ever want to say, I hope I have a horrible meal? Oh, I hope my friends are bad to me. Oh, I hope I live in a really bad home. Oh, I hope my car breaks down all the time. Nobody says that. Everybody wants to have a nice car, good friends, a comfortable home, money to spend. So your, your future deserves it. Do it. Do something about it. I'm talking to you like adults. I teach this class at universities. Do it. Don't pretend. Don't pretend. You're only fooling yourselves. We've all been through what you're going through. I want more money than I used to have when I was 14. I used to drive my mama crazy. And then I learned, oh, I don't have to drive her crazy because I got my money straight. All of a sudden, you know when you want to go out? Mommy, wait for the party. It's so-and-so, and you know their mom's is cool, and you know their grandmama's nice people. Can I go? Okay. Oh, but I need $50 to get a new outfit. Oh, well, I guess you ain't going to that party. But if you got the $50 for your outfit, then all you got to get is permission, and you're good. These are the two most important things to remember. Time is limited. How many hours in a day? Money is limitless. If you want to become wealthy or if you want to have enough money to pay bills for a lot of people, you can do it. So this is my thanks to you. My contact information is on there. May all your financial dreams become real.
Don't be afraid to dream. Maybe you want to be the next designer. Maybe you are the next Beyonce. Maybe you are the next guy who hits 50 home runs. Maybe you are the next surgeon who creates a new way to operate on somebody. Maybe you are the guy who becomes the bank. Maybe you become a bank president. There could be a bank of Ramos, you know. That's not illegal. If you and your brother get your money straight, file your paperwork in order, instead of going to Chase or Citibank or whatever, Banco Popular, you might be banking down the road, Ramos Savings and Loan. Boom. I guess he paid you that $50. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. I tell my friends, you can get hit by the bus, but you can also hit lotto. Anything is possible. Let's wrap this up with this one thing. Everybody say it with me. Anything? Anything. No, don't say it like you're going to a funeral. Anything, Anything. Is, possible. is possible. And I, and I can, have can have it. Anything, Anything. is possible. possible. And, I and I can have it. Doesn't it feel nice to say that? As opposed to he's going to owe me $5 for the rest of my life. <laughs> right? Speak that beautiful thing. We're going to have some time when we wrap up here for any questions or whatever. But I want to tell you sincerely from my heart, my name is Jose Northover. I'm a loving New Yorker. I come from a good immigrant family. My mother's from Puerto Rico. My father was from Panama. And I'm grateful for the lessons they taught me. But I'm also grateful for the people who taught me about money. Don't pretend. Do stuff. Don't lie. Tell the truth. Don't, I was looking for you, find you. You can have whatever you want. Doesn't matter where you are now. I took welfare. We had everything that you can imagine the government gave. We had two of them. Little by little, it gets better. But it doesn't get better just because I want it to get better. It gets better because I do something to make it better. You're young enough, do something. Graduate. Accomplish things. Find good people to be around you. Although this is not the class for it, but I'll tell you this. Don't mess around with drugs. Some people say, I'll have a drink when I want to. That's on you. But don't get caught up on that life. That's money <laughs> burned up. So again, thank you so much. My contact information is there. And I sincerely, sincerely appreciate all of you letting me have time with you today. And that I hopefully gave you something you can hold on to so that your future can be as bright as you want. You can have a closet full of sneakers. You can travel the world. You can have everybody talking good about you. You can help your family. You can give to charity. But you got to do it. So my promise to you is my contact information there is not there for a joke. If you got a problem, something you don't want to talk to anybody in public, send me an email. Call me. I will try to make my best to give you a lot of time and help you with that problem. But I don't want your kids to have money problems. I don't want your grandkids to have money problems. You can solve them today. Thank you very much. God bless you.